Greg and I received a phone call on January 1st, 2015, from a church member. He was calling to tell us that his granddaughter had driven off into Lake Waco. They had not recovered her. Within a couple hours, the people of Top Hand started showing up at the lake. They drove in pulling trailers with horses. They were saddled up. It was bitter cold. It was in the 30s. It was raining and windy. And we searched until it got dark. We were up there first thing in the morning. All the men were back out on horseback. The unfortunate part of that is that she did not survive. It was a very, very tough day. There were a lot of people out there on horseback, but there are a lot of people that don't ride horses. But we were out there, we were serving coffee, we were making sure people had food, we were ministering to the family. There was something about that day that showed who Top Hand is. And it showed literally us being the hands and feet of Jesus. Morning, good to see y'all this morning. Come on. Top Hand is a cowboy church in Valley Mills, Texas, and a member of the American Fellowship of Cowboy Churches. What's unique about cowboy churches is the arena ministry. Top Hand has an arena, and it's our major outreach tool. It gets people coming to the property that don't normally come to church. All right, that's going to be our best time so far with 39 seconds. We began in September of 2005. We were meeting at my house and we had a shop. So I just pushed everything all against one wall and I hung blue tarps as the background. This is where Top End started. This little barn right here is where the very first gatherings and very first meetings took place. God just began moving immediately and we were able to find this 16 acres that we're actually on now. We purchased a tent to start with and then a metal building and our numbers just continued to grow and grow. The early church was very primitive. We had a dadgum fan off a windmill that was hung from the ceiling that we used as a ceiling fan. It leaked oil like a sieve and you couldn't stand under it. You'd get oil dropped on your head. If you're at our church, you can just look at the concrete. Well, you can see where we've grown because you can see where the new concrete's been poured. We were getting excited about expanding again and then COVID hit. When COVID hit, there was a lot of flack taken on us by staying open because people were scared to death. Well, scripture tells us do not fear. We started having all these new faces and we're like, we're not doing anything different. What is the trigger point here? We found out so many people, their churches had decided to stay closed. We were gonna be a place that says, we care about you, our doors are open, please come be a part of our fellowship here. A PDO is a parent stay out program. It's an outreach for stay-at-home moms, just an opportunity for them to have some downtime. And then we get the opportunity to show the love of Jesus to the children and to minister to them. We average between 35 and 40. So each year we've had growth. This is the start of our fourth year. At this rate, we're gonna outgrow our classrooms rather quickly. And so as we continue to expand, we started having new ministry opportunities from there. We had a family said, we've got this homeschool co-op that is really looking for a place to meet once a week. And I was like, let's do it. I don't, and I know nothing about it. And I was like, if this is what the Lord's leading us to do, let's do it. F3 is faith, family, friends and it's a community of families that came together more than a decade ago to support the more challenging subjects. And that co-op grew to a full day of academic and elective courses. Next thing I knew, we 
we're experiencing 100 plus kids, 145 with teachers and everybody here. And we have them in every nook and cranny of this building. It's funny, we tell our people on Tuesday, be quiet if you come through the front doors because there's actually gonna be a classroom set up in our foyer for this F3 homeschool co-op. And so Lord, we love you. We thank you for each one that's here. We pray that you would bless our time together today in Jesus' name. Amen. It's busy. It's hectic. Uh, the joke is don't come up to the church on Tuesday. We have a significant wait list for our families, and uh, we've even thrown around the potential idea of opening the church for a second or third day of the week if space and time allows. One, two, three, go! We have kids from everywhere that come. Kids from Valley Mills and Clifton and Crawford and McGregor. Kids that come from Axtell, Riesel. 30, 45 minute drives to get here. It's a broad community. There was a student that came, he's black painted fingernails and the gothic scene. After about two and a half weeks of that, he shows up in Wranglers and boots. I teach him how to row and he says, I want to be a youth minister. You know, that kind of has a tendency to hit you in the breadbasket when somebody says something like that. Both low and high, rich and poor alike, my mouth will speak words of wisdom. Waco itself is spreading out. People are moving out of the city. They're moving to the outlying areas. There's small five acre ranchettes that are coming up around. We see that growth here. We feel it already, but we think we have just tipped the iceberg of what's coming out our way. People keep moving in. Uh, Waco's not getting farther away from us. Waco is encroaching on us daily. Valley Mills, Crawford, Spiegelville, Clifton, they're, they're all busting at the seams. There have been times that I've just called out communities. People would say, yeah, we're from McGregor, or we're from Axtell, or we're from West, or we're from Clifton. 15 to 20 different communities yeah. represented. Well, we have this vision at Top Hen, and it's a big vision. It's a vision that we say, oh, but God. We are looking to build a 32,000 square foot facility, a worship center, a children's area, an office area, a ministry area, so that we can better serve the greater Waco community. We are gonna have a small cafe, kind of a meeting space. A cafe would serve our community in a whole new way. This would be for the people traveling up and down Highway 6 going to and from work, but also would be a place for a Barn Fellowship leader to host a Barn Fellowship a pastor to have a counseling session, the youth to have a place to meet during the week between our youth meetings, and just fellowship. We'll do, and I think we talked about this in our last meeting. What we'll do is as drawings get done, right? Vision so Bridge has come alongside of us. Their field is design. They put together some great plans for our church. We've already met with local contractors that this is their field. Yeah, yeah. So we can have a summertime baptismal out there. That's, you know? No, that's what I'm talking about. So then at the It's bottom. amazing how God brings everything together for one purpose. So right here is where our main sanctuary is. Right in this area right here is going to be our foyer. We're going to have a little cafe, a little meeting area. I want to be able to put a great big giant windmill out there and we're going to have a, a water trough where we'll actually do outdoor baptisms and we want that to be our focus piece so when people are coming down Highway 6 they're going to see that great big windmill and it's going to show them that this is where living water can be received and the living water is Jesus Christ. The youth have never really had a dedicated space. We've always bounced around. So for us to have a dedicated space would be phenomenal. And it would show the kids that, hey, you're important enough to us that we give you a part of the church. Big problem that we run into is the space. Right now we're just pushing chairs around to make room for any event that we do have. Having a new building would be a blessing. It would be nice for our families with younger children to have their kids in one space. The current existing top hand 
building would be built out to include several additional classrooms for children's ministry on Sundays, parents day out, and homeschool. When it comes to worship on Sundays, over the years we have constantly piecemealed things together. Our stage, the one we built was we thought was big and we've already expanded it. To be able to add more musicians, more people that can serve the Lord through our worship team on Sunday mornings, and then also to be able to go to a professional sound system set up professionally and be able to use that for God's glory, I think would be huge. I'm excited to do some more group Bible studies, things that, that I can lead or different curriculums that we can offer and have the space to do that. This church has radically transformed my life. I got engaged in the arena. Greg did our wedding. Our kids have been loved from day one and prayed for at this church. You cannot put into words what this church means to our family. We have been so abundantly blessed. One recent thing that Top Hand has been huge in my family's life is three and a half years ago, diagnosed with cancer, stage four. And at that point, not that we didn't know we were loved before that, but the church just really has poured out so much support and love for our family continually. We've really felt like this is how the body of Christ is supposed to support one another. This whole campaign is really what Top Hand is all about. We know this is a big project. It seems like an overwhelming task for the average person, but it's amazing what God can do when we all come together to serve a greater cause. Scripture reminds us that our treasures should be stored up in heaven. And we believe this is helping to build a legacy for the kingdom. We want to ask you to come partner with us. We are Top Hand and we're built to serve. You.